Hey, this is Dr. Neil Schwartz. Today we're continuing our video series on all acne treatments with a comprehensive review of board certified dermatologists. The intent of this video is to prevent improper expectations, prevent hype, and prevent false hope when it comes to entering treatment for acne. It is my belief that if all acne sufferers know exactly what they're getting into before starting treatment, they will be at less risk of being traumatized emotionally if their treatment does not work. So, with that intent clearly laid down, let's discuss in detail board certified dermatologists. We'll start with the pros of seeing a board certified dermatologist. Number one, they are accountable. Dermatologists have many people to answer to, not just the patients. They have to answer to the state, the laws of malpractice, their peers, their specialty associations, and the reputation of their private practice. So when you see a board certified dermatologist, you know that this dermatologist has something on the line by seeing you. For this reason of accountability, the choice to see a dermatologist is a safer choice relative to taking advice from an amateur in real life or online. Number two is that dermatologists have the most powerful temporary remedies in their office if you need a quick fix. If you have a special event coming up or you've just flared out of control more so than you ever have, a dermatologist has the most power to quickly and temporarily bring your inflammation down fast. They can do this rapidly using injections, oral antibiotics, lasers, or even estheticians that are in their office. Either way, these dermatology practices have the most powerful short-term remedies available. Number three, dermatologists almost universally have very high academic credentials and are continuing to speak of skin conditions every day and every week with their peers. You'd be amazed at how much academia and how much energy in lectures and seminars is spent amongst board certified dermatologists. Back in New York City, I used to attend the Mount Sinai Medical Center Grand Rounds for Dermatology, and I found it fascinating that generations of dermatologists would all join together to throw their opinions at some of these more difficult cases. I would see a white-haired dermatologist in the front row that looked about 78 years old. Then I'd see a 50-year-old tenured dermatologist who was running the meeting. Next to him, I'd see a 35-year-old dermatologist with a very busy practice. Next to him, I would see a dermatology fellow, then a chief resident, then the residents, then the interns, then the students. It was amazing. The academia that is going on in the dermatology community is more than you can ever imagine. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't always equal clinical success for patients coming in developing a relationship with our practitioner, but it should be noted and credited before I make any critique that the academic excellence of this group of individuals is top notch. Number four, despite the reputation that has developed online for dermatologists, it's important to know that many dermatologists actually do care. They care about your well-being, they're trying to get you better, and they're doing everything in their power to get you to your goal. I've met handfuls of dermatologists, and for the most part, most of them are not sociopaths just trying to get your money. Despite their failure rates with acne, it's important to know that many dermatologists are well-intended and are trying to get you better. Now, with all due respect, and just to keep expectations realistic and to prevent emotional trauma, we're going to talk about the cons of seeing a board certified dermatologist. Number one, not enough time. If a patient has a condition that is highly emotionally charged and has been going on for many years, four minutes with the doctor in that very quick relationship may not be enough to create confidence or to create an effective clinical relationship that brings a patient from point A to point B. This lack of time is a major contributor to why patients fail acne treatments when seeing board certified dermatologists. To illustrate the point, I'll ask you a simple question. Why do you think your dermatologist's son's or daughter's skin is very healthy, radiant, and beautiful while you are still struggling with your acne under the same care. 
Think about that. Your dermatologist's son is having great skin, and your dermatologist's daughter is not complaining about her skin. It's doing great. You're seeing the same person, and your skin is not doing great. Why do you think that is? Take a moment with that. The answer is, it's not just genetics. While many conditions play in the global success of acne, a major player is the time spent with the practitioner. And your dermatologist's son or daughter has unlimited time to spend with their expert practitioner. That's something to think about. Number two, overconfidence in acne treatments. I believe one of the biggest emotional injustices in the treatment of acne at the dermatologist's office is the overconfidence in the 20-year-old acne protocol. Whether it be from benzoyl peroxide to retin-A, epiduo, doxycycline, spironolactone, the oral contraceptive pill, through Accutane, and now lasers, dermatologists believe they have an arsenal of weaponry that will work every time. The problem is, it's not working. The clinical failure rate is high. It's my estimation that 50% of all those who see a dermatologist will not find total satisfaction with their acne condition and they will go on to see another dermatologist. Most patients and clients who have come to the acne practice have already seen multiple dermatologists. I myself saw 10 dermatologists in my lifetime and none could help me. And my patients and my clients have had the same story. So. With all this failure going on, why are these dermatologists so confident in their 20-year-old algorithm for acne? That's the question, and that's the critique. So, this is my recommendation if there's any dermatologist watching this video. If you're in the hallway looking at a patient's chart, and it says they're there for acne, do me a favor, and before you enter the room, bring your confidence down just a little bit. Know that you have a 50% failure rate and know that the person you're about to meet has already failed other dermatologists and other treatments that makes them very fragile to more emotional trauma when promised results. Number three, dermatologists are often, quote, in the box when it comes to improvising and creating a treatment strategy that will work for chronic resistant cases. If Retin-A, Epiduo, Doxycycline, Spironolactone, Oral Contraceptive Pill, Lasers, and Accutane don't work, many dermatologists are stuck. And it's this getting stuck that I find to be in the box. You see, all of these other treatments that were created and put into the cookbook algorithm of dermatology, they were all thought up and invented by other physicians and clinicians. So, if your clinician is not inventive and innovative and creative like their predecessors, they will not be able to get you out of a resistant and stubborn situation. What I've found is that many dermatologists and unfortunately many doctors in general are working out of their medical cookbook as if that is all there is to create. As if that medical cookbook was here to begin with and there weren't other physicians creating the cookbook. In order to come out of the box, a clinician who hits a dead end with a patient must realize that that is the moment of innovation. When Accutane fails, or when Spironolactone fails, or when lasers don't do anything, that's the moment for innovation. It's an opportunity to create the next level of treatment. Unfortunately, most dermatologists are not coming out of that box. And when they hit a dead end, they unfortunately blame their patients for not using the products twice a day or for not using the products correctly. Whatever it is, there's no innovation made. And that is what I call in the box. So here's the bottom line. Board certified dermatologists are still a great and safe option in the treatment of acne. They bring accountability, they bring academia, and they bring powerful weapons to bring down inflammation fast. For this reason, they are still recommended by me as one of the options for your acne treatment. However, don't be baffled, confused, or surprised 
if your dermatologist hits a dead end in your acne treatment, they are oftentimes, quote, in the box, and they are overestimating their treatment success rates and will blame you if you fail their protocol. So it needs to be said and it needs to be heard. Dermatologists are having a 50% failure rate, and this is seen by acne patients having seen multiple dermatologists. If the 20-year-old algorithms for acne were so successful, every acne patient I meet would not have already seen a handful of dermatologists. Now, as a final note, I'd like to give you a tip if you have a dermatology appointment coming up. Remember that your dermatologist is a human being, oftentimes overworked and oftentimes well-intended, and they're doing the best they can with the system that has been created. In a lot of ways, they are pawns to the Western medical system that is far larger than their practice. If you want to maximize your relationship with your dermatologist within this mediocre medical system, my recommendation is to give them a little bit of love, charm them up, show them that you care about their well-being too, as often doctors are not doing so well health-wise. They're overworked, they're stressed out, they have huge responsibilities, so of course, they might not be taking care of their own body as well. When you meet them, show them a little bit of love and you'll be surprised how much love you get in return. That's just a small tip from me to you. I hope this video prevents future emotional trauma for acne sufferers that didn't know what they were getting into prior to starting treatment. I'll be here if you need. Take care.